Number one, when did you realize and how did you realize that you were homosexual? I grew up from a person who was prepubescent, who did not think about sexuality, just like most children who are prepubescent don't think about sexuality or intimacy with somebody else, and to a person who developed and recognized those types of tendencies and interests in myself that were romantic, erotic. How old were you when you noticed you had homosexual tendencies? I noticed that I was somebody who had feelings and that were that, that, that their so-called homosexual feelings at around nine. How old I just got finished there. I said eight or nine. Okay. So you're telling me at eight years old, which is a age at which heterosexual or homosexual children do not begin to develop a sexual attraction for anybody. Male well, or well female. what I said about me, I can't, I, can't, I can't give you textbook page six of what you read. I'm telling you about me. Like I said before, right, as I was growing prepubescent, let me finish my point, man. You got you to let me do it if you're going to ask the go question. Go ahead, go ahead, when go ahead, I was go ahead, prepubescent, go I didn't have those kind of feelings. And as I grew past prepubescentness into discovering my sensations, romance, etc., I realized what, what they, where they, were, they were directed. But now we have to go to a break. I knew I was going to come up. But we were talking with Dr. Umar. He was asking me some questions, and um, we were I was responding to them as I could. But he talked about the DSM-4 and how there's arguments even among, even among white folks about whether homosexuality is a mental illness or not and all those kind of things. And my perspective is that I don't care what they say. Here we are. But his question was that um, he was trying to make a point about me and myself and my own development sexually. And I answered the question that, you know, just like any other normal child, once I had no sexual sens- sensations be pre-puberty and then fun- and at some point as I grew up, eight, nine, heading into teen- in teens, I discovered them and, and they were as they are. Mm-hmm. But One other question whole- for you, my brother, then we can hit the phone lines. It's got to be quick, though, because i got to get these people on this phone. Just okay, fill it up. no problem. No problem. Here's the question. Homosexuality, the brother Sean who called in earlier, he did bring the question to you. Why didn't you make it clear that you were a member of the LGBT community? I'm not and a member of the LGBT community, said, brother. I am not a member of the LGBT community. That's not that's not my okay, come so from. That's, okay, that's not my frame of reference. I'm not involved in that. I got you. I understand that. I understand that. You do not identify with the LGBT community, but no. you are a homosexual, correct? Yes, yes. Okay, I got you. Now, why is it? that so many homosexual males, black men, but speaking for yourself, okay, why is it that on the one hand, y'all want to be accepted and you want your orientation to be normalized within the community, but at the same time, you're not overt about identifying as a homosexual. In other words, it almost seems as a manipulation, (laughs) if you would, almost as an infiltration and then later exposure. Why can't it be stated out front that this topic that we're discussing, I'm homosexual, and because of that, my views may be influenced by my sexual orientation. It just seems to be a contradiction that on the one hand, you want to be accepted, but on the other hand, you don't want okay, to be accepted. Okay, you made your point. You made your point, brother. First of all, I, I, can, sp- for, I can speak for myself because that's all I can do this morning is speak for me. Yes, I, did, I don't ask for acceptance. I don't ask for, I don't ask for acceptance and don't request acceptance or any of that. I, I, I don't need that. What I do need people to do, let me finish my point. What I need people to do is have a rational, black, informed, culturally relevant perspective on the issue and to rationally engage me about the issue if they choose. I don't walk in a room announcing no sexuality and asking nobody for acceptance. Now, I have no problem. As soon as you ask me about it, I answer it at the beat of a drum because I don't have no problem saying that about saying that I'm a same gender living person. Not at all. But it's rarely is it relevant because I don't have homosexual eyeballs. that look through the world and everything with a homosexual analysis. I'm a black man in a society who's concerned about the treatment of black people and what happened to the brother who got murdered in front of us on the camera. And I'm, I'm a protector of black people and black life. And defender of black people and black life. And I'm loyal to you. That's why you're on this show. The advancement and protection of the health of black people. That's what I'm about. I don't go around with no homosexual tambourine. So I don't walk into the room. I don't walk into the room and go, here I am, the homosexual represent. No. And I have to reiterate, because of how people think in the society, that I'm not part of no LGBT 
agenda, and that's easy to pick up if you do any kind of Google search on Cleo Monago. I, I'm not I'm not involved in that at all. I'm a black man who's the same gender but man it, who who's an but, activist but on behalf but of but black it, people. But if you advocate for acceptance, doesn't that? But I don't advocate for acceptance. I, I per, Cleo Monago has not asked you to accept a thing. And er, if you listen to this conversation played that's back, true, you will hear earlier that the, the, the acceptance is not, uh, that's not on my agenda. But in our discussion, your comments made it clear that you did not support the fact that homosexuality is not a normal behavior. Like it was clear in your insinuation that you did not agree with me or any of the I do not agree with not you at all. I, see, I, you have an exactly. outsider, you have an outsider so, theoretical reactionary perspective. I don't have that same perspective it's as you. So, of course, yes, it is reactionary. But hold on, brother. Is, 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 celebrity, is celebrity still with us? Is celebrity still with us? Hold on a second, doctor, because we have a phone caller. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Celebrity still there? Yes, this is Hi. celebrity calling from Phoenix. Hi, Omar. Please, Queen. Um, I also wanted to say that I'm very disappointed in the way that the interview was going earlier. It seems that... Um, when, the, when the young man called in and clarified that you were a homosexual, it made it much more clear to me why you were giving all this pushback to Dr. Umar, because now you, are, you know that he opposes your lifestyle choice, and it's coming through in all of your conversation with him. <laughs> um, you need to find a way to separate the gay you from the journalist you, because Thank you, sister. it's going nowhere. He's not going to change his position on homosexuality, and so... In order for the conversation to go more smoothly, you need to just separate that. He's not attacking you personally, but it, it, it's coming through very strongly. Umar, keep up the good work. You know I support you and your work, and have a good day. Thank you, celebrity, and thank you for thank making you. it. Thank you for making it real clear that you're simply biased, and that your perspective is biased because I'm not coming from no homosexual pushback. That's that's just a that's just not true. I have conversations all the time for black folks that don't even include this issue, but it's relevant to the discussion in terms of some of the concerns that Dr. Johnson has. But oh no, what you're saying, right, what you just got from the sense celebrity was simply wrapped up in your bias and your support of, of Dr. Johnson. It was not based on well, a, what, a, a factual what analysis Cleo, of me. But Cleo, you think you can separate who you are from your opinions. You cannot. There's no way you can be gay and not being stop calling me gay man the, the, I, I, no let me tell you what i am you don't tell me what i am i don't identify with gay and that whole that, that whole paradigm to separate who you are from what you think you cannot do that you, you there's no dividing line between i'm a homosexual but i'm not pro homosexual that doesn't even make sense to you it doesn't make sense to you it doesn't it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to you because you cannot fathom what i'm saying you're caught, you're caught up okay. in your perspective. You're caught up in your paradigm and your, in my opinion. Rea question. Let me finish, brother. Let me, f no, I gotta finish my comments what first. I'm gonna finish my comments, people. brother. Hold on. Let okay me finish my comments. You have no choice, dude. I gotta finish my comments. I, you are coming ahead, from a place of being reactionary. You have a perspective. The sister, call, the, the, the sister has, the sister has the perspective. And that's what's going on here. Anyway, because of time, I'm I'm I, I want to hear your video. final question. Where's because scientific proof because of time, I want to hear your final question, show man. Me the proof. I don't do gay, brother. Now, if you want to come back on the show tomorrow, and we and, what do you and mean we can. You don't do gay. What do you mean you don't do gay? We are, it's 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 twelve fifty three. Do you have a final question? Yes, final question. What good is going to come to the black community from the open expression and expansion of homosexuality? What benefit accrues to us? by accepting this lifestyle. Well, I don't know what you mean from a black perspective of an open acceptance from expansion. Let me finish, man. You got That's why I said don't interrupt me earlier because I knew I was going to say this was going to make go you ahead. interrupt go me ahead, like Cleo. you're doing go right ahead. now. I knew you was going to do that. Go ahead. This expansion <laughs> stuff that you're talking about, all these other kind of things you're talking about is based on your concerns. I'm not no, involved. I'm let me finish, man. Is I'm not involved. Let me finish, brother. I'm not involved in the stuff that you're talking about. I'm not involved in an expansion. I'm just here existing and doing what I do. I'm not involved in this expansion you're agenda that you're talking about. From the gay movement. You I am very separate from the gay movement. Gay and therefore a part of, even though it is now considered normal behavior, that was only because of a popular vote at the APA conference, not because of scientific evidence that proves right. people but are it's because gay. Of, but there it's because no of... Dr. Wait, Umar, no it, it's because of voting that we that we can vote. 
It's because of voting that we have the right to, not, to now go to the bathroom where we want to. It's because of pe people voted despite the white supremacist perspectives of things that we made the things occur. Well, voting is just one thing. Not science. Voting is based on all Drapedomania was based on so-called science. Not, the brother, inferiority of black people was based on so-called science, doctor. Stay with me. Stay with me. But we got to get to science. Can we agree? Can we agree that better do it voting quick. is not a science? Stay with me. Can we agree? This is my first question for you. Can we agree that voting is not a scientific way of determining whether or not people are brought into this word homosexual? Can we agree on that? We can agree that on that, but we got to but, but we got to talk about why I mentioned voting, though. See, I didn't mention voting because I'm crazy, not the sky blue. But, I mentioned no, voting because you talked I'm about based on voting, question. it was taken out of the DSM three as a mental illness. That's why I brought up voting. Right, but here's my question. Do, listen, if we wanted to, we gonna miss your questions for not, me, man. If we don't hurry up and get on this, because no, it's two, it's twelve thirty nine. If we want to determine, stay with me, my brother. If we want to determine whether or not a certain illness, okay. Is pathological or man-made. Any illness, I don't care if we're talking about the flu, I don't care if we're dealing with homosexuality, any condition, do you think that voting is a scientific no, way? No, no. You brought up voting, not brother, not me. Day. You brought up voting, not me. I'm asking you the question, though, my brother. And I answered because it. Because that's how and I answered ho it. homosexual, but stay with me, all I'm saying is homosexuality Dr. Omar, to be regarded I, as no, you're not you've already, you, Look, brother, sorry. You've already done the DSM-3 thing, and I want to hear your questions. And also, we have a caller. We have a caller, too. Let me make this statement. Okay, but you, I'm about to cut you off now if you, don't, if you don't hurry up. Let me make the statement, my brother. All I'm saying is that homosexuality became normal in 1974. I know that. Based off a vote. Not scientific evidence. It's I know that. A vote. Okay. So to answer your questions, brother. You make that clear. You know that. Okay, good. But I knew All right. that. Now, here's my question. Good morning again, people. This is Cleo Monago here on the Roland Martin Show, a special guest host here on the Empowerment Radio Network. We have an exciting show coming ahead. We will be talking to Dr. Umar Johnson in just a moment. But again, I want to make sure that we're clear on who we're introducing. So I'm going to introduce him one more time to make sure that we have good rhythm here as we start. As I mentioned to you before, Dr. Johnson, um, when I mentioned that you were gonna be on the show with me today, there was a lots of response. Some of it was controversial, some of it was very interesting, um, and maybe some of the callers will raise some of those issues. Who knows what's going to occur in terms of who was gonna call here and say whatever. But um, there was some concern about, well, you have a concern, apparently, about boys, um, the influences that are out there that can impact their behavior and and how they act and how they come to be as concerns around e the effeminization of boys and you can give us the context that raises that concern and there's some concern about your concern and i can be more more um clear about what i'm saying after hearing from you but i got a lot of responses from people who were concerned about your perspective on how boys should be and some of them had all kinds of things to say about that. Before getting to that, I want them to hear directly from you, though, regarding your concern <clears throat> around the feminization of boys, the emasculation of boys, and give us some more information on the context that you think leads to this problem. Well, I think what you're referring to is my position on homosexuality. I think that is what you're referring to, so I will go straight to it. I do not support in any way, shape, or form homosexual behavior um but i would also like to clarify that i do i do not advocate neither hate nor harm to any member of my race i have love for all african people no matter what their particular psychological challenge may be but i do not support that behavior and yes there has been a deliberate attempt to effeminize the black man in american society since the time we got here but it has been intensified in the past 40 years as part of a global African population control program. Uh, simply stated, homosexuality from a white supremacist eugenist framework represents a very successful population control technique. And why is that? Two men cannot make a child. Two women cannot make a child, which is exactly why the homosexual agenda has been directly targeting 
African-American children. Many states in America today, California being the first one, and Chicago Public Schools being one of the latest, have actually introduced some form of homosexual study, if you would, into the social studies curriculum. In California, it's required that children be taught about gay studies. Now, whether you're homosexual or heterosexual, I think we could all agree that children in the third, fourth, and fifth grade should not be receiving education on sex, not that young. However, that's exactly what is being done. In Chicago, their new sex education curriculum, and I'll be speaking in Chicago on the 18th of this month to anyone who's interested, but their new sex ed curriculum includes lessons on how to teach fifth-grade children how to use anal condoms. Uh, I wouldn't want my fifth grade daughter being taught to use condoms at all, and definitely not anal condoms. we got to realize something. In America, the black man has always been considered the number one threat to white supremacy. The masculine, aggressive, unapologetic black man has always been considered the number one threat in this society. Whether his name was Malcolm X, whether his name was Dr. King, whether his name was Marcus Garvey or Huey P. Newton. The only black man that white society has ever been comfortable with was the effeminate black man because he poses no direct challenge to the white man's control of the society, which is why we see now in many places in society effeminate black men. And being effeminate is not the same as being gay. I want to make sure we're clear. You can be very effeminate and be heterosexual. You can be very masculine and be homosexual. Effeminization and masculinity only relates to the way that you behave, okay, the way in which you conduct yourself. It doesn't deal specifically with your sexual attraction, okay? So to be homosexual is not to be effeminate. To be effeminate is not necessarily to be homosexual. So, but the effeminate black male is the only comfortable black male in this society. And that's why we're seeing the ascendance of effeminate black men in a higher academia, in politics, in the church, we're seeing more and more effeminate black men being put in positions of power because the aggressive and the assertive and the unapologetic, the masculine black male is, is considered something to be feared. And that also plays into this whole ADHD thing. It plays into the whole miseducation thing because schools are run by women. Ninety-five percent of all teachers in America are white racist female, 95%. So when we talk about the black boy struggling in school, we're talking about a masculine child who's having difficulty conducting himself in a feminine way in order to be successful in school. When you look at ADHD, conduct disorder, emotional disturbance, when you look at our boys that are putting these medications, nine out of every ten of them are masculine. They are masculine black boys who are having trouble adjusting to an effeminate setting. Dr. Johnson, let me respond because you, you you said a whole lot. And Daryl, we know you're back, so hang in there, brother, so we can uh, finally get to you. And when when we get back to the phones, but I want to have a t conversation with the doctor real quick. You said a lot. Um, I first mentioned to you before you went on that um, that discussion there what there was concerns about your perspective of the effeminization of black men, and I didn't mention homosexuality at that point. I just talked about the effemination the feminization issue, and you mentioned effeminization. You also mentioned that you can be um, hetero feminine and not necessarily be homosexual as a male. You can be masculine and be homosexual as a male. So you brought in the sexuality piece um, when initially I was really talking about so-called gender expression, feminine, masculine, et cetera. And you talked about the attack on black men and how there's been a 40-year attack on black men. And, and you also mentioned that two men can't produce a child, two women can't produce a child, uh, you talked about these books that somebody has where they're teaching children. I hadn't heard that before uh, about condom use and anal sex and all kinds of things. So I, what I try to do um, is talk about this issue from a black perspective and just look at the black pieces here that are immediately black, not the white students, excuse me, the white teachers that you reference. Those books that you're talking about, I would imagine that's, that's a white source as well in terms of um, – these curriculums because I in the black schools that I know about like at Compton where I'm from and in South Central there's these books don't exist in the black community context at this point now they might be on their way but so far there's no black schools that I know of that have introduced these books so so far these now, books, when you say black schools what are you talking about are I'm talking, talking about, about I'm talking about black schools I'm talking about predominantly 
black community schools. Schools that so are you're talking uh, about public school. I'm talking about public schools mo- pr- primarily. Yes. Okay. Because you're that, talking about public school and you're talking about California. It's in the curriculum. So there's no such thing as Compton doesn't have it. It's there. Now, whether the principal or the teachers are emphasizing it or not is one thing, but it's there. because Okay, well, that's, well, that's the point. The that's the point. I mean, that, that's the point. If it's not emphasized yet, it's not there. And believe me, I'm very directly connected to the school system there and what's going on and where well, the, so rather, whether it's hovering, on the, whether it's hovering somewhere there. or not. It's not in these schools, and I doubt if if black parents would would, uh, would allow allow it. That. But that's that's fine. We can we can discuss that. We can disagree, and I'm sure we disagree on a few things. But my concern is that Which is fine. My concern. Well, we're getting ready to go into a break. Here we go. Next time, I'm gonna do more talking than you because you've done a lot of talking, and I think I'm gonna get some some ideas in here for us to discuss. <laughs> not but we go, but we're going we're going into a break, folks. So hold on to things. But what we were before we left was the issue of homosexuality and the emasculation of black men and an agenda or a, um, some people use the word conspiracy against black men and their manhood, et cetera. And I was talking to the doctor and, and, and I'm requesting before I get back to it that he listens to me and that our conversation is between each other and not at each other because that can occur. Yeah, you don't have to request that but, I'm but take, brother. I'm going to okay. listen to you. Well, cool, but I, but, I have, but I have to make the request anyway because I just met you and, 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 you're new, and, and I'm finding out more about you as we, as we speak. Now, okay. um, last night, somebody sent me a video um, featuring you and some sister someplace having a discussion, and she identified as a queer, and you went off, you went, you responded to her about the LGBT movement and um, some other things that you had, and I, I would imagine that you remember what I'm talking about because it was you in the video. I might reference that, but I just I remember. Th- that I saw that video last night. Now, as I continue with my point here, my agenda in even raising this is because of the importance of black people actually unifying and becoming comrades with each other and cooperative with each other and less combative with each other because that com- that, that combativeness creates two things. It creates more than two things, but at least two things that comes to mind. When we are abusive to each other, dismissive of each other, hurtful of each other, we, we create potential Trojan horses for white supremacy in blackface because black people in this racial society become mad at black people and then go work against black people on behalf of other people. And sometimes that's unconscious because the pain is so bad we have not really analyzed it. We're just acting out and become black white supremacists. And I do, and I do what I can in my life to counter that phenomena. The other issue that um, comes to mind is you are building something to help us and you have these perspectives that might create division. And and you said that you do not, and let me finish because you might be provoked by this. You said you do not support homosexuality. Now for me, that's a strange passage because that's like saying to me, well, I don't support people with who are left-handed. I don't support them. And it doesn't make sense to me with a goal of unification and problem solving among black people to say to say something that I don't support this. And let me finish. I want to be clear. I'm not asking you to support it. I'm not asking you for approval. I'm not asking you to accept anything. I'm not going to interrupt. You just did. You finished because I haven't tried to interrupt you. So okay, well, I, but, well, okay, well, well, okay, well, let me be, let me be me, because when you interrupt me to tell me what to do, then it makes time longer. So if I keep saying that, I'll be I'll get beyond that and finish my point. Me to let you finish, but just stop saying. Let okay, me so finish, as, I was saying, as I was saying, as I was saying, I'm not right requesting, that. I'm not requesting, and I'll keep in mind what you just said, brother. I don't want to talk over you and be disrespectful and do something I don't even believe in. I heard what you just said, and I'll keep that in mind. Now that you've alerted me that I don't have to say that. I'll try not to, <laughs> I, as you might imagine, being somebody who speaks to people. Some Sometimes you have to do that, don't you? You have to let people know that they need to let you finish. So let me get out of that habit with you because you're apparently different than the others. And I believe that's very possible. Um, I'm not asking you to support anything. I'm not asking you to accept anything. That's not what's going on here. This is, a, for me, a logical conversation regarding what we can do, if anything, to be more cooperative and effective and successful at collectively empowering black people and healing black people and making us all better on each other's behalf. But when you say terms like I do not support homosexuality, believe it or not, you're also saying I don't support this realm of the black family who are part of the black community and the black experience and have been for eons. When you talk about 
two men, when, without somebody saying that or even implying that, when you say that two men cannot produce children, everybody knows that. So when people say that, I'm like, you know, just like you just got finished saying, why you keep telling me not to interrupt when you not, when you're not interrupting? I'm like, why do people keep telling folks who are anti homosexual, the anti homosexual who keep telling people what two ca- men cannot produce children? Well, same gender loving people produce children all the time, but not with each other. But they do what they need to do to produce children. Heterosexual people produce children all the time. Some of them are not prepared to produce children and help to fill up the foster care system. So it is a, this, this is a very complex issue that, that in terms of everything that's occurring here. But my concern, again, is that we look at behavior that we do as we claim to be problem solvers that create that create division. Also, your perspective on the feminization and homosexuality and whether a homosexual is masculine or feminine and or all this other kind of stuff, it, th- there's a lot there. We need a precise formula regarding what you really think is going on and what and what we can do about it. And before you comment, I want to mention something I, that, where I do agree with you. I agree, because you have to be blind not to see it, that there's a emasculization campaign against black men. There is a campaign to create chaos among black men and between black men and women and between black people. There's a campaign to what I call psychically castrate and perpetuate a castration of sorts of black men in terms of their psyche and how they think. And, and we keep doing things that make us unconstructive with each other and, and, and keep on doing things that make us more constructive for white people than we are for black people. And it's a definite attack on black manhood and black masculinity. But there's so much more to this than what you say, frankly. And I think that these, there needs to be some more conversations about same gender loving people as part of the black experience instead of simply the pathologizing or saying insane stuff that everybody knows, like two men cannot produce children and two women cannot produce children. Everybody knows that and two men are not trying to produce children. We, I mean, that's, that's understood. But men who want to produce children and women who are same gender loving in, in both instances who want to often do that quite successfully. So same gender loving people are reproducing. So there needs to be a more sound conversation about this, and maybe it'll, it'll come out of our, our dialogue. And I have to say, before I go any further, that this community, the black community, has not only done a lot of things that you want your school to do historically on a consistent basis, we also have been the community that has been the most resistant and so far the most unable to have a non-abusive, focused conversation about this issue in ways that there can be some dialogue. When you talk about it, when I hear other people talk about it, there's always a monologue. Like when you were talking to the sister, you, were, you had your audience with you and you were talking to her, but it was, but it was not a dialogue about this issue. It was, it was more you presenting and, and having most of the voice. And we need to have more rational conversations about this too, because there's a lot of misconceptions because there has not been any dialogue about this issue. May I respond? Of course. Okay. First of all, I don't like when you take my comments and restate them and take them out of the context. My purpose for saying two men cannot have a child and two women cannot have a child, which we all do know, but we may not all know that this is part of a population control strategy that goes back to 1974, signed into law by former President Jimmy Carter to reduce the numbers of black people on the face of this earth. That's number one. Number two, the conversation that I had with the queer sister in Kansas City, Missouri, you talk about how it was a monologue and not a conversation, which is quite interesting because anyone who saw that piece would see that the sister became belligerent, disrespectful, emotional, did not want me to speak. And anyone who watched how I handled my sister, I did it respectfully and patiently, and we did have a dialogue because after every statement I offered, I allowed her multiple follow-up questions. So I thought that was interesting. Number three. Well, you know what? Hold on. Hold that thought. Hold that thought, Omar. Hold, 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 no, hold, no, hold that thought, brother. I want, to, I want to correct myself. I want to correct myself real quick, and I want you to finish, but I, I get, to do this on, get to do this on this show. More than what I've usually typically seen, frankly, you were more conversational with her than I've than I've seen. So you're I think you're right about that. I think I think there was I think I still think what I'm saying have elements of truth. I was more first off, 
I have enough material available on YouTube where you can see me on panels. You can see me in one-to-one interviews. In fact, if on my GoFundMe.com forward slash Dr. Umar page, the interview that's on the fundraising site is an interview by a professor from the University of the District of Columbia who is challenging the premises of my book, Psychoacademic Holocaust. So she was not favorable to Dr. Umar. She was more favorable to the opposite argument. And if you see in that interview, I was very respectful of the Queen Mother. So I don't have a problem allowing alternative opinions to be voiced. My only issue is when people want to skew and twist what I stand for so it feeds their argument. Listen, I do not consider homosexuality to be a natural part of African life. I do not. And being a therapist for 20 years and being a school psychologist for almost 20 years and studying psychology for 20 years, I know for a fact through my own experience that many of our homosexual black males, and there's exceptions to every rule, just like at the top of the show, you talked about how you got a nephew who got a father at home who's diagnosed with ADHD. There's exceptions to every rule. But guess what? What I find more often than not, because I work with them, many of our homosexual males were molested as children, as boys. There's homosexual pedophilia, just like there is heterosexual pedophilia. And most of the... Dr. Umar, hold on a second, brother. Hold on. When we come back, we're going to a break now. Brother, we're going to a break. You can't speak during the break. We're going to a break, my brother. So hold on a second. And when we get back, I will be definitely doing some more talking. But we Just a moment here. Well, you raise a lot of issues. And what I would like us to do so we can make sure that our callers don't get irritated and want to hang up because we get on their nerves by being hyper and passionate, too passionate for people's ears. It's kind of. Well, no one's hyper. Let's, let's stay calm okay, on this. Passion on this is a issue. part of what I do. I know, brother. Okay. I, I, I know you're I passionate. You I'm, passionate show, I'm, 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 I'm passionate, too. I'm passionate, too. Let me make this one request of you. One request of you for the rest of the show. You can request anything you want. Hold on, listen, listen. I believe your listening audience is intelligent enough to interpret what I say for themselves. They don't need you to go behind my statement and reiterate it in a very piecemeal and sarcastic way that is decontextualized from what I said. So no more of your reinterpretations of my statements. I don't like it because it's disrespectful and it's insulting. When I make a statement, if you want to respond to it, my brother, respond to it. But we don't need you to paraphrase what I just said because I'm quite sure your listening audience is smart enough. Oh, my, let me tell you something, brother. Let me tell you something. Let me be real cool with you. I'm going to do the show the way I do the show. And not everybody speaks the same language. Let me finish. Not everybody That's speaks okay. the language. Not, not everybody okay. speaks the same language. Not, 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 every, not, not everybody talks you like you, show. brother. And I'm not trying to. Any time, to anytime I say something that's to. incorrect, but that do that, that I, I don't like. Anytime I, I just have to remove myself from the show. Omar, anytime I say something that that's incorrect, please correct me. I'm not, I have no interest at all, and no need, and no it's investment into is to, is to misquote you. It's not. A, it's not an attempt simply to summarize and make sure that a diverse audience understands all that's being said, because not everybody speaks in in DSM four. You know, people speak in different ways, and I want to make sure that everybody. Underbody, I want to make sure everybody understands what we're saying. So that's really my intention. I'm not trying to piecemeal or do anything that you just implied. Not at all. Not, and if it's coming off that way, I don't intend that to be the case because that's not what I'm trying to do. And no matter who I'm interviewing, sometimes, and I've heard my audience say they appreciate it, sometimes they don't understand exactly what, what the person is saying. And, they, and they, it's helpful when I reiterate it. But I, re, I reiterate it publicly so you can correct me in case I get something off. So I'm not trying to just sit here and go on a tangent regarding your I can reiterate it myself, though. If it needs to be reiterated, who better than the person who said it to clarify the point? I don't need you to clarify. Well, what's going to be better probably is me because we already heard we, we already heard what you said, and I want to make sure everybody understands you. And when no, I say sir, when I say something, you get to tell you get to say, Cleo, you didn't get that right, man. You that's not what I meant. You, you get to do that. Require further elaboration. And I don't have a problem providing. Well, I don't know. I don't know what people need elaboration on. But let's stop. The, hey, brother, let's stop this. And I'll do my. I'll do my best to make you comfortable. I'll do my best to make you comfortable, brother. I don't need you and, to make me comfortable. And not do things Just that don't bother you. What I have to say. Okay, anyway, so I you mean. mentioned in your last comments. You mentioned what you just said earlier about pedophilia, 
and you gave all these opinions about homosexuality, opinions. and you talked about psycho. Yeah, they're they're, they're opinions. That's what I had in but mind. let me, hey brother, I'm going to finish my. I'm, look, Omar, I'm gonna, you, you got you got brother, brother, you got to have the courage to let somebody else speak. Okay, you might disagree with me when I'm finished, and that's cool. But you got to have the courage to let somebody else speak, dude. Now you mentioned something about pedophilia, and how there's pedophilia going on. And that perspective always confuses me because pedophilia is wrong. Anybody who has mental health realizes it's wrong. But I remember hearing you mention on this tape that I saw that said about the Roman, Roman church and pedophilia in the church and the, the, the um, homosexual pedophilia. And it always confuses me because pedophilia doesn't have a particular sexuality. And there's all kinds of pedophilia happening in all kinds of churches, including some of our churches. And there's a lot of so-called heterosexual pedophilia that's going on. A lot of there's some traditions in parts of the country where a, an older man takes advantage of a younger girl, and she's expected to just take it. There's rape that's occurring. I've been in conferences with, with the majority of women in the audience, and they all have experienced some kind of molestation. And if you use the theory that you come up with, which means that saying that homosexuals have been molested, then everybody that I've run into, to some extent or the other, would be homosexual, and that's not the case. So, th so, so that argument is weak when you say that everybody's a homosexual because they've been molested. I was not, I was not molested. So when you, that's why it's important to have a dialogue with two people on the stage having the same level of conversation with the audience. And what I said earlier was that when these conversations occur in the black community context, it's one person on stage giving a monologue talking about it, and people respond from the audience. It's not a balanced discussion. And you also said, when you interjected, and I agree with you, I think I did over, was overarching when I said that, implied that maybe you always don't let other people speak. No, you did provide some space for the sister to speak in, in Kansas City. But still, you were, you were the one on the stage. You weren't both on the stage addressing the same issue. So your points and whatever you made was the dominant narrative. And we need to have this discussion in the black community context where people have the courage to have a narrative be shared so people can hear other people's realities and experiences. Because what people are going to come out of that meeting with you thinking is that everybody has been molested, that all homosexuals who were molested as children, and getting people to stigmatize homosexuals by saying, well, they don't reproduce children. I'm familiar with what you, talk, what you say when you mentioned that the agenda is to stop the reproduction of black people. But just because white folks or whoever supposedly has and, and actually do have these agendas against black people does not mean that what occurs among black people naturally does not occur. White people don't control the whole natural world. And my point to you is that same-gender loving people occurred before white people came into existence with their agendas. So there's more going on here, and I invite you and others who think like you to have some dialogues about this instead of a monologue about this, because it's creating pain, dissension, and it's creating a community of, that's fragmented that feeds into racism, that feeds into those external agendas that want to make sure the black community is so dysfunctional they can exploit us. So that's a very important part of this discussion that I think that we need to have, and we haven't had it enough. But are you still there? Okay, it appears that if Dr. Johnson can't, can't control the conversation, he can't have the conversation. And that's pretty sad because what has not occurred here, and I, and I frankly think it's a challenge to being courageous, is an actual conversation between two people on an issue. He wants to tell me how to talk. He wants to tell me what to do and how to run this show, and that ain't going to happen. So despite my brother's apparently good efforts, he's a control freak. And he can't control Cleo Monago. So apparently since he can't do that, he left. And that's cool. But if you want to talk more about these issues and some of the issues that Dr. Johnson raised, you can do so at 888-669-2281. We had several callers on the line who apparently got tired of waiting during um, Dr. Johnson's and, I, and our interaction. But um, one thing for sure, some issues were raised. And he made his perspective clear. But I'm starting to be concerned about whether I support, support anything done by somebody who cannot have a conversation. From my perspective, courageous people have dialogues. Control freaks who are insecure have monologues and are afraid of being challenged into being wrong or whatever. 
so they, they they run away. I would never have ran away from a conversation with anybody. I would hung, I would have hung in there, particularly if I'm claiming to care about the community and care about you know black folks. Why not have the dialogue? Why not disagree and have a functional discussion regarding our diversity and our perspectives? So I was hoping to do, do that with the doctor, but um, he apparently you know couldn't uh, couldn't do that. But he raised some issues that I think that are important to look at. He talked about pedophilia. And a lot of people who are in the so-called pan-Africanist movement who are against homosexuality keep raising the issue of pedophilia. And it makes me assume, and this is an assumption that may, it may or may not be relevant, that some of the people who keep raising that themselves were molested and they're acting out the pain and trauma of having been molested themselves. I'm not saying this is true about Dr. Johnson because I don't know that. But I'm saying that it's inconsistent to talk about pedophilia and only focus on homosexual pedophilia when most pedophilia globally, let alone locally, is heterosexual pedophilia, a grown man taking advantage of a girl. Like I said when he was on the phone, I've been to women's conferences where the, the speaker said, raise your hand, and I'm talking about hundreds and hundreds of women, and I see you, Tiani, you're going to get you in a moment, the caller. But I've been in conferences, women's conferences, where there were hundreds and hundreds of women in the audience, and the speaker asked the audience, how many of you have been molested? And 80% of the room raised their hands. Now, another perspective that these so-called Pan-Africanists have is that, well, we can really go into a break. So, Tiani, I see you. And we're going to be getting back to you as soon as we get in from the break. So please hang in there. Be patient, callers. I know you get tired of waiting, but I want to hear from you. And I want your perspectives on um, Dr. Umar Johnson and our conversation Things I'm saying, you know, whatever comes to mind. This is the Roland Martin Show featuring special guest host Cleo Monago on the Apartment Radio Network. I also want to say that I was not trying to talk to the doctor about just homosexuality. I was talking about boys and men and his perspectives. And unfortunately for some people, homosexuals fit into the category of boys and men, particularly men. There's no separation there like people would like to think. You still with us, doctor? Uh, Yes, I do. And... I wanted to say that I did agree with my brother's, my brother Sean's comments. Uh, they may not have all been relevant for you, but I do think when we look at the larger context station, whenever we talk about a heterosexual, black, masculine, male agenda, it always tends to get curtailed or furloughed into a conversation about some other group. It's almost as if no one is interested in dealing with the plight of the heterosexual masculine black male. As he said, the conversation gets diverted into, well, what about the homosexuals? What about the women? What about Latinos? What about all these other groups? And for me and what I see in my work, I, I really believe that heterosexual masculine black men they are the most significantly discriminated against group in this country. It is not homosexual black males. When we look around, I look at my doctoral program real quickly. I went my doctoral program. There was a black male on the faculty, homosexual. He was the only black male on the faculty. I look at other schools I've attended, and when I talk to other brothers and sisters who are in undergrad, graduate school, doctoral programs, we are seeing an ascendancy of that is coexisting with the oppression, with the oppression of the heterosexual black masculine male. Well, d- doctor, the ho- the concept of a heterosexual, can you hear me? You hear yes. Me? Okay. The concept yes. of a heterosexual conversation was never introduced into this conversation until a caller brought it up. We didn't call this conversation a heterosexual conversation. You didn't call this conversation a heterosexual conversation. You called it, we, I called it a conversation about boys and your school. It was not referenced. Brother, let me finish. Let me finish uh, and I want to okay. answer. I want to answer. Right. I cannot wait to hear your questions, and I want to answer all of them. And I'm very serious about that. And, and Drew, I mean David from L.A., please hang on, hang in there, brother. I know you're on, you're on you're on the phone waiting to talk to us. But I was, was want to make my point. For me, this was not a heterosexual or homosexual conversation. It was a conversation about black boys. 
And even you didn't frame it in, in a sexuality terms until the, the caller did that. So there was no attempt here to derail anything. Most of the conversation was about your school and boys. Now, when I hear the term boys, I don't make an assumption that they are heterosexual. I don't know what they are, and I don't have any, any finite assumptions about what they are. I assume they're boys. And I assume if I have to break it down, that they're going to come, they're going to be all kinds of human beings under the rubric of boys, because I know that 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 occurs. But I was not having no bias about how they should be or what they should be. They were boys that you were taking care of and that you're creating a school on behalf of. It was not a heterosexual conversation for me. And when I brought up the issue of feminine males and, and your concern about that, believe it or not, I wasn't even thinking about homosexuality at that point yet either. You brought up homosexuality because you said, well, let's get to the point. It's about homosexuality. You brought it up and I'm cool with that. But that's not where I was coming from and where I'm coming from. I'm really concerned about black boys. And as a same gender loving man who fits in the category of black males, I'm concerned about black males. And one more thing before you speak, you talked about how this society and the racism in it targets and focuses on the masculine heterosexual black male. Well, I got to tell you, man, and that's a fallacy. Let me finish. As I have been shot at, pulled by the cops. Everything that black men go through, I go through, without exception. And when it comes to Cleo Monago in particular, the even the so-called white gay community, they do whatever they can to marginalize and destroy my image because I'm black affirming and they don't, and they don't play that. One thing you did say that I heard you say on the Kansas City video was that the LGBT movement is another angle on a white supremacist agenda. And, hey, I agree with that and have said that before I ever heard you say that. It's in writing on, on articles I've written decades ago. So we have no argument there or no disagreement there. But the attack is on black men's brother. When, they, when, they, when, when those white boys, and I forgot the brother's name, who got ran over by a truck, but there were some white boys in the Midwest who decided to go and run over a brother. And before the show is over, after the next break, I'm going to get his name so I can see it on, on air. But it was a brother who white, who white boys targeted, and they ran over here and killed him. They didn't know that he was a homosexual. They didn't care if he was a homosexual. He was a black man. And white supremacy is emasculating black men. That's another thing that's going on that I think is true. But it also is... Is chasing down black men because they're black men and not, not pulling them over saying, are you a homosexual? Because if you're not a homosexual, if you're a homosexual, we're not going to mess with you. That's a fallacy. Black men, regardless of their sexuality, particularly their so-called masculine, I'm considered so-called masculine. So when, when I'm walking down the street, people who look at me as the enemy or who want to target me, they do not care what my sexuality is. And there are so-called masculine male sexual homosexual people in this movement who've always been in the movement for black people pan-african etc but who have not identified because of fear of being attacked and fear of having to deal with rejection and judgment by the community so they just keep it to themselves and that's been the case for a long a long 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 time so there's a lot of misinformation and ignorance about our diversity but i'm gonna close out by reiterating that oh no white supremacy particularly if you're a strong brother they do not care what your sexuality is Three questions for you. Sure. Three questions. The first question is... David, I'm sorry. David, I, I want to I hear Dr. Uma. I want to I I respect the guy on the phone. Good day. Good day. Dave, Dave, please hang in there, man. I want to hear what this brother has to ask me, and we're going to get to you. So don't try not to go away. I know you're waiting. Go on, doctor. Okay. The first question is when say that there is, in fact, a war against black men in this society and there isn't a feminization campaign against black males in this society that you don't agree with but at the same time being i'm sorry we're going into a we're going to a break you, we, we're, we're, we're hold that thought because okay, i want to hear okay. that question well we got to take breaks sure, it's not personal sure. callers audience we got a break coming and we'll be back on the other side of the break this is the roland martin show with, is dave still there Yes, I'm here. I'm still here. Hi, didn't let Dave go. Go on, Dave. Hey, what's up, brother, uh, Dr. Umar and, and uh, Cleo? I'm I'm very surprised at, at what I've been hearing. It, it kind of reminds me of in 1963 when, when Malcolm X was at Berkeley. If you're going to have a guest on, let's hear from the guest. The, the host, you have made this whole show about you. And I think that... The lines here of you asked Dr. Umar to be on your show. 
So why don't you afford him the courtesy of explaining himself without interruption? And not only that, the passive-aggressive attack that you've had against him and the one sister that called that you called her a fan and a follower. You know, those, pa- those passive-aggressive attacks are not warranted, are not uh, are looked upon as, as being cute. You know, it's very disingenuous. So I would just say, why don't you do as most guests should do? Allow, I mean, as most hosts should do. And allow the guests to speak for themselves. That's all I have to say. I would rather hear Dr. Umar than you, brother. I have no doubt that that's the case. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for calling. All right, uh, Dr. Umar, you have some questions for me. Yes, I did. I had three for you, but if I could really quick, you would allow me to. I would like to read the DSM position paper, and it's real quick. It'll probably take me a Man, minute. Man, I'd rather hear your questions. I really want to have a dialogue with you. I'd rather hear your questions than you read anything, because we, time is limited. But, we, we're, about to go, sake, we're about to go off the I show. But I believe, though, Cleo, for the sake of the audience, for their own education, on the normalization and acceptance of homosexuality, they need to know why it was taken out of the DSM as a mental illness. Don't we okay, think but they what about understand the... the Put it in context. Okay. The well, let, you know what? Let me do this thing. Let, let's do a compromise. Let me just read a couple sentences instead of the, the whole. Let let's just, let's let make it quick, though, because I want to hear your questions before we, we, we end the show. I got you. I got you, because I know the time is ticking. I got you. Okay. Now, up until 1974, April of 74, when the sixth edition of the DSM-2 was published, homosexuality was a mental illness. It was known as 302. Dot zero, and it was called sexual orientation disturbance slash homosexuality. Okay, now, according to the APA, and I'm reading directly, it said controversy rages as to whether homosexuality should be regarded as a pathological deviation of normal sexual development or of the human potential for sexual response. Recently, the controversy has focused on the American Psychiatric Association's DSM-2, where homosexuality is listed as an official diagnosis in the section on sexual deviation. It says the proponents of the view that homosexuality is normal argue for the elimination of any reference to homosexuality in the psychiatric disorder manual because they consider it to be incorrect. But then it says those who argue that homosexuality is a pathological disturbance in sexual development. A certain sexuality out of the DSM would be to give official sanction to this form of deviant sexual development, and it would be a cowardly act of succumbing to the pressure of a small but vocal band of homosexual activists who defensively attempt to prove that they are not sick and would tend to discourage homosexuals from seeking the much-needed treatment. Now, that's just the intro. I wanted to say that. So the audience knows that even amongst psychiatrists, mainstream psychiatrists, black and white, there is considerable dis- dis- considerable disagreement on whether homosexuality should be viewed as an illness or as normal behavior. And that disagreement goes up to this day. And I like putting that out there because a lot of people are under the oppression, under the impression, excuse me, that psychiatry and psychology has defined fully for everyone that homosexuality is a normal form of behavior, and that is not true. You have just as many psychologists and psychiatrists who believe it is an illness as you have those who believe that it is normal. Well, now, Dr. My three well, well wait a minute, brother. See, I got to respond to that. Sorry. Well, go ahead, go ahead, I, go I got to respond go ahead, to that. Go ahead. First of all, that's the same context, you know, the, the, the mental health, the people that determine what mental health and, and is and is not in this country, historically, all you've, have you ever heard of Dr. Samuel Cartwright? Yes. You, tell us what he did. He used to diagnose black people with a disease called Drake Drakedomania. Exactly. From slavery was a mental illness. Yeah. They, white folks who also created that book and who you're quoting right now also said that to want to be free and not want to be a slave was a mental illness. 
So there's a I whole agree. there's a whole context here of white people and their subjectivity mm-hmm. that needs to be broken down, which you don't have time to do in the next five minutes. But see, I don't need to read the DSM totally three. Agree with that. Let, let me finish. Totally let me fi- let me finish, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. They had, you heard a leaky leaky went around with a skeleton of a yeah. black man and a white man to prove that the cranial cavity of a black person was smaller than the white man. All of it was mythological, and not true. But he looked very legitimate with his thick glasses and his teth- stethoscope as he went around the, the country and the world, proving that we were in fear, also using the mental health anthropology and all kinds of stuff to make his point, and he, and he was wrong. I don't need proof, and I'm bringing myself in because then I can sound less theoretical and just be real, real about reality. I don't need to read a DSM-4 or any of those things to know that I exist and, uh, and know how I came to be. So that's another conversation I would like to have with you when we have more time. But I don't care what the, what those people okay. are the, what those people are saying that you just got finished saying because manifest destiny was considered a legitimate perspective too, which, which they use as an excuse to murder everybody in this, who are original to this country. So I don't sure. care. I don't care about those contexts. The conversation needs to be and need to be more on the I road. Follow you. I follow you. But, but I want to I want to hear your questions. And, that, and, and there's a sister I, named I there's somebody you. from I'm Phoenix. But I, I want to go back to why I read that. I didn't read that because I believe the DSM to be the be-all and end-all. Anyone who knows my work knows that I intensely disagree with many of the diagnoses in the DSM, most popular. But you read it, though. You, you took up time on the show to no, read No, no, no. But what, no, listen, what did I say, though? The reason I read it is I wanted the listening audience to know that there are thousands of psychiatrists and psychologists in this country who believe it to be a mental illness even though it is now considered normal behavior that was only because of a popular vote at the APA conference, not because of scientific evidence that proves right. people but are it's because of, But there it's because no, of Dr. Wait, Umar. There's no conclusive it, proof. It's because that of voting that we, that we can vote. Proof. It's because of voting that we have the right to, to now go to the bathroom where we want to. It's because of pe- people voted despite... The white supremacist perspectives of things that we made the things occur. Well, voting is just one thing. Not science. Voting is based on all. Drapedomania was based on so called science. Not, the brother, inferiority of black people was based on so called science, doctor. Stay with me. Stay with me. But we got to get to science. Can we agree? Can we agree? That better do it quick. It's not a science. Stay with me. Can we agree? This is my first question for you. Can we agree that voting is not a scientific way of determining whether or not people are brought into this word homosexual. Can we agree on that? We can agree that on that, but we, gotta, but, but we got to talk problem. about why I mentioned voting, though. See, I didn't mention voting because I'm crazy and out of the sky blue. But, I mentioned no, voting because you talked I'm about based on voting, question. it was taken out of the DSM-3 as a mental illness. That's why I brought up voting. Right, but here's my question. Do, listen, if we wanted to... We're going to miss your questions for me, man, if we don't hurry up and get on this because no, it's, it's 1239. If we want to determine, stay with me, my brother, if we want to determine whether or not a certain illness, okay, is pathological or man-made, any illness, I don't care if we're talking about the flu, I don't care if we're dealing with homosexuality, any condition, do you think that voting is a scientific no, way? No, no. You brought up voting, brother, not, not me. Okay. You brought up voting, not me. I'm asking you the question, though, my brother. And I answered because it. Because that's how. And I answered hope- it. Homosexual, but stay with me. All I'm saying is homosexuality. Doctor Omar, to be regarded I, as no, you're not you've already, you, look, brother. Sorry, you've already done the DSM three thing, and I want to hear your questions. And also, we have a caller. We have a caller too. Let me make this statement. Okay, but I might have to cut you off now if you don't if you don't hurry up. Let me make the statement, my brother. All I'm saying is that homosexuality became normal. In 1974, I know that. Based off a vote, not scientific evidence. It's I know that. A vote. Okay. So, to answer your questions, brother. You make that clear. You know that. Okay, good. But I knew All right. that. Now, here's my question. Let me, let me ask you a question, Omar. 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 Do you want to have? A, do you want to have? A, do you want to have a real conversation on this issue? We are clear. 
But no, we're not. No, we're not. We, we're getting ready to end, brother. We're getting ready to end, and you're bringing in your bias and your and your perspective. And it's not. It's not. We can't. We we cannot get into it in a way that's helpful in this little bit of little bit of time. Because when you tell me I'm gay, and when you tell me, when, let me tell you my point. When you tell me I'm gay, and you telling me who I am using that white frame of reference, which is what gay is, to tell me who I am and who I'm not, and not considering where I'm coming from in terms of who I know I am. This look, brother. My que my question. See, you, no you, you're you saying stuff that there's no time to address, dude. Talking about African this and African that. There's no time to have that conversation. Do you so want to have it? To continue this conversation. When do you want to do another it? time? How about tomorrow? Whenever you you let me know the day and time. Tomorrow. Sure, I'm available. Okay, cool. I'll let you know how much time we'll be able to give to this topic tomorrow so we can do part two. Because I want to, I want, I want to, okay. and I want you to talk about the gay identity thing. What you just got finished saying is how you gonna do this and how you gonna do that. I want you to ask me those same questions so we can actually hear each other. Because we can't do it right now, unfortunately, in that in that amount of time. And there's still Understand, people the trying to up. call. Can I drop my contact information for the listeners real quick? You gotta wait because there's a sister from Washington who wants to who wants to speak. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Hello, mm. sister from yeah, Washington. I'm still here. Hello. Yes. Yes. You know, I I am totally disjointed by this this whole dialogue. And 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 the point being, brother, and and where I am a sister, unless you have been raped, then you don't understand the process of grooming. Unless you have been understand what I'm saying, we wish you because you didn't allow him. At the, the top of the two hours to say what he was saying. So I know that you're, 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 you're the, you're, and, and if you call tomorrow, I hope that everybody that's listening takes the time to just think about what you just said and how this conversation has gone. This is chaotic. And, and, and I'm just so sorry to have he heard it, all of it. I, I would not have even listened to any of it because we did not get disseminate the message that we needed to do for our people. Now, what you are, you are. Sister, um, hold that comment until tomorrow if you like. We have to end the conversation because we're going into the ending of the show. Thank you for that comment, yeah, sister right. from Washington. Thank you, brother Umar, for calling and us having our dialogue. We will talk some more tomorrow at some point. And I think we're going to get something out of this conversation. This is the Cleo Monago person. That's on the Roland Martin show as a special guest. And we will be back with you tomorrow.